You're listening to Tipsy, Tipsy Book, Book Reads. Reads. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Jess. And, and we're tipsy. Too many books on my TV are. Yeah. This podcast is like a book club for the antisocial. We make a drink inspired by the book we read and talk crap about life and fictional characters. We really hope you listen and drink along. Side effects of listening to this podcast may include reading vivaciously, extreme bouts of laughter, tipsiness from craft cocktails, talking shit about life and fictional characters. Listen at your own risk. Just a warning, this podcast is explicit. We are all over 21 and there are spoilers. We, we warned ya. Hi, Bessie. Hello. Well, we are in Crown of Midnight. This may or may not be our second time recording this episode. Things happen. <laughs> <laughs> A robotic voice happens. <laughs> oh, my water bottle was just stealing our thunder there. That's rude. Uh, stick it in my hand. Anyways. Crown of Midnight. This is yeah. one of my favorites. It's good. It's one of my favorites. I think the next one is my favorite, but but this is really close. The next one we're reading after this. Yes, yeah, so well, the next one in the series. <laughs> um. Okay. So thoughts. It's so good. Right. Yeah, I definitely think it's better the second time around. Yeah, it's chapters one through. Do you remember? Mm. Either 27 or 29, I think. Um, up to 29. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we're at because it's a huge freaking cliffhanger. <laughs> Why do we always do that to ourselves? <laughs> because we can. Um, do you want me to go over some of the characters? Yeah. And then we can talk about the drink. It's stunning. Okay. So, um, of course, we have Selena, the amazing assassin. We have Dorian, the prince. Kaol, the guard, the k- the head of the guard, Captain I guess, of the king's guard. captain or whatever. Uh, we have Nehemia, that is the um, Elway's princess. princess. Elway. Yeah, and we have the king, who is just known as the king, and Roland, 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 Roland is Roland on the river. <laughs> Dorian's cousin, and he shows up. And then we have Caltaine from the first series. Um, she does make an appearance and, um, Archer, we, we meet a character named Archer and Mort and Mort. You're (laughs) right. And Mort, the most important, um, really quick. Okay, good. Never mind. I was going to ask if you set a timer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, okay. So what you drinking? Cause this is crazy. Yeah. We are drinking Selena's chocolate cake in a cup. Yeah. Because chocolate cake is a need, not a want. Mm-hmm. And since this is the second time we're recording, this is, cheers, not exactly the same recipe. <laughs> but mm. we had brownie that looked like cake, and we put it on the rim, and then it fell into the drink. So, But we're it's going to be delicious to eat once I drink the rest of this. Yeah. And did you see how many people liked our reel? That yeah. Finally. It's about damn time. It's about damn time. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, this is fantastic. Whether or not you do a mocktail version of this <laughs> <laughs> or a regular version, it tastes delicious. Um, but yeah, she literally talks about chocolate cake so much in this freaking book that I'm like, I need the recipe. And this has to be the drink. Stunning. Dang. Chocolate cake. I love chocolate cake. I love chocolate cake. It's my favorite cake. Besides, like, lemon, mm. the lemony cake. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say. I would like a chocolate ice cream cake. Mm. Yum. It's kind of what we had tonight. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, what an aki- iconic scene. Should we just jump in and scatter thoughts? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, hopefully I don't sound like a robot. It looks like we're good. Before, <laughs> when I tried to jump into I- iconic s- thoughts, <laughs> scattered thoughts, I sounded like a robot. A little robot. Mm, a tiny little robot. But mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. yeah, so what a freaking way to start a book. Listen, it it really said, let me grab you by the throat. Yeah. And make you want to keep reading this. Yeah. There was this reel that I saw, and it was, like, a guy talking about this book, and he was just, like, going on and on about, like, the head thing. And then he's, like, but she didn't actually kill somebody, so it's fine. But I'll have to find the reel because it was very funny. Mm. (laughs) 
That is funny. What a moment. I, I, what a moment. And like, I love how it was written because you get her inner thoughts where she's like battling to keep this confidence because on the outside, everyone is like, um, who is this girl? Like, she's so confident. I don't recognize her. Like, blah, blah, blah. And inside, she's like, be confident. Don't. Like, I'm not lying. I'm being honest. Don't look at Dorian. Don't look at K.O.L. Like, straight in the eyes. Give the smirk. Like, she's... Yeah. Like, walking herself through the motions. Mm -hmm. But I love how it alludes to there be sa being something wrong, but it doesn't straight out the bat tell you, mm -hmm. like... Because you... It's as it walks through the scene of like her quote unquote killing or not killing the people, you think that it's actually happening. There's like something going on, but you don't think that she's not actually killing them. No, it's it's incredibly subtle. Like, yeah, like exactly what you just said. She's lying about something, but what we don't know. Yeah, so good. Love it. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about. Kale and Selena. Okay. Just overall. Um, I thought it was freaking hilarious when she you looking for a red flag. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I got it ready. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> I just felt like we needed that. I heard yeah. Kale's uh name. Kale's name and <laughs> the red flag came out. Um, but I was, I think I was going to say, I thought it was really funny because they work out all the time. Right. But yeah. now it's like a day workout. basically. Yeah. And Selena notices all these people out in the courtyard in like the freezing weather. And she's like, who are they here for other than my boy, Kayle? Mm hmm. And it's like, Kayle totally knows. Oh yeah. He's just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever that's so funny right you won't be catching me out in the cold just to watch some boy not for anyone please not for myself like working out <laughs> not for my husband he goes on runs i'm like you have fun with that <laughs> i love this cool. as we're in florida like we're the okay but then the opposite <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna be out there trying to the watch heat. him in the heat yeah exactly <laughs> good way to put it <laughs> but um i did think that was really funny and then some other things about just Kaol and Selena's will they, won't they? Dorian's like jealous, but also like he do you boo. Yeah. It makes me so mad at Selena what she <sighs> did to She's Dorian. So dumb. She is dumb. That was dumb. That was so dumb. It was just like hypocritical. It a hundred percent. A a thousand percent. Like, what is the difference? I mean, I guess there is a little bit of a difference, but like that's still the like the head of the guard. Concept. Yeah, I'm gonna adjust this real quick. And he clearly is more devoted to the king than his own son. Yeah, one hundred percent. Dorian's like fuck, fuck this you. guy. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, who? <laughs> yeah, and then Kale just like blindly trusts the king. He's so dumb. A thousand percent. I can't wait till we get to part two because I have so much to say about that. But, okay. So, they start this relationship. All right. And he, I feel like he constantly compares himself with Selena. Do you ever notice that? Like, there's always these moments where he's like, oh, well, I've almost sacrificed as much as Selena. Yeah. And it's, bitch, no, you haven't. Yeah. First of all, you gave up being a lord of your realm or whatever to be captain of the king's guard like a nice cushy job with in your little palace like i don't really think that's that much of a sacrifice you hated your dad first of all you didn't even want to be there yeah your dad sucked you yeah. got another job with your best friend and you don't you've been captain of the guard for how long and you just killed your first person literally like, that's not quite the same thing as the amount that Selena has lost, even just on the surface, even before we know anything about anything else of her losses. Like, it alludes to, like, she has a rough past. But even what we know of she was a slave in a horrible, horrible camp and survived that. When people don't last more than a week sometimes. Yeah. 
So even just off of that, if you know nothing else about what she's been through, none of what Kale has been through, like, compares. I think you said this the first time we recorded this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like when someone compares their goldfish dying to your, like, parent, parent <laughs> sibling, wha- whatever, yeah. like, someone very near and dear to you. Not that your goldfish isn't dear to you, but, like, a human that you've lived with for 10 plus years. Yeah. Like, like yeah, it's like, like uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's giving that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's giving trauma comparison. Yikes. That ain't it. One upping. Yeah. yeah. What, do what do you think about, about her birthday dinner for him? I, she was so, so sweet. sweet. Okay, okay, first of all, well, I, I want that birthday that dinner. I know the green. Yes. yes. That, that sounds like a literal really dream, really first of all. Wait, I have a really important question for you. Okay. I gotta get comfortable. Hold on. What What would be your menu? menu? Because she curates the menu based off of all his favorite things. Oh, yeah. That's so true. Oh, my God. What a good question. Mm -hmm. I I haven't thought of it myself. Great question. Okay. Thank you so much. It's like we do this for a living. Hmm. All right. So my menu would be to start, I want a wedge salad, like the iceberg wedge salad Mm -hmm. with like as much ranch dressing as possible yeah. in a yeah, world dietary where I'm restrictions eating dairy. Are gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, just like as much cheddar cheese and ranch dressing as possible and like the whole wedge. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, so good. And then the main course would have to be the the Guinness stew. I, I knew you were going to say oh, that. Oh my God, I've been <laughs> dreaming of it with just like the crust, just like so buttery and flaky and delicious. Mm. And then dessert, I would have to get from Miller's they have this chocolate ice cream cake that's like layers it's like the Captain Jack's cake or whatever and it's like thin layers of ice cream cake ice cream cake and it's so thick and dense and absolutely incredible Mm. okay so my starter would be either a like very similar to the soup you made tonight Mm, yeah which is like a butternut soup the one that you made for the murder mystery. Yeah. Or gnocchi soup. Ooh. Chicken and gnocchi soup. Gnocchi. Yes. And then my entree would be my mom's homemade chicken pot pie. Pie, great choice. Like, like made with the dairy. Like, like before I was allergic. Yeah. <laughs> Dairied. Stunning. So good. So like fresh, fresh out of the oven. So Fantastic. Yeah. And, and then, then for a side, she used to make this mac and cheese. And I would say her mac and cheese, mm. like mm. a thousand percent. And then, and then dessert. I'm not a huge dessert person. So I feel like something along the lines of like what you made tonight or. <laughs> My mom doesn't cook all that much, for but for some reason, reason her things, things when she does, does cook, she like, kn- she knows her her recipes yeah. and those recipes are hers Stunning. and she makes this apple crisp Ooh. that is literally so good if i could have that with dairy and never have a stomach ache i would have that yum mm-hmm. sounds amazing oh yeah. oh yeah it's like crumbly on top and like <sighs> inside is the perfect amount of just like soft and gooey yum mm-hmm. i make these like cinnamon apple muffins that mm-hmm. kind of like have that like crunch on top mm-hmm. and then just like Yum. yum. So yum, good. Yum. My dad used to ask for that. Oh, my God. I thought I couldn't see the thing connected to my microphone. Oh, no. And I thought it wasn't plugged in. Um, but my dad used to ask that for his birthday dessert every year. And that's, like, when she would make it. Wow. What a great menu. Okay. And drinky drink. What would you? Oh. Mm. What would go with all of that? Yeah, I was just thinking. Hmm. I feel like because mine are so heavy and creamy, yeah. <laughs> which is hilarious, I would, I would need something that's lighter, lighter or, or a whiskey. whiskey. Yeah. Like either like a gin and something really light or just like whiskey. Yeah. Hmm. I can't get my I I would say like a, like a blackberry bourbon smash with mine. Hmm. Or perfect. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yum. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that sounds delicious. Yeah. What would you make 
um, for mine. Ooh. Chicken pot pie. Right? Yeah. Okay, let me make it a little easier. My starter would be that, like, soup that I made today. That's, like, the gar- like the penicillin yeah. soup or whatever. I would make that as a starter so it's less creamy. Okay. And then the chicken pot pie and then the apple crisp. Okay. I would say, ooh, maybe something like, like pear. Mmm. Like a roasted pear gin type of dealio. Give it to me right now. Mmm. Sounds amazing. I've been like craving pear syrup, like making mm. a pear. Syrup. Well, I wonder if that's coming up in the books anytime soon. You could do that. Do they even need season? Yeah. Pears? I mean, I mean, somewhere I in the, the world. person that should know that. <laughs> 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 somewhere in the world they're in season. That's yeah, sure. Um. Anyways, that was a fantastic question. Yeah. That's really important. Um. Anyways, that scene. <laughs> that would definitely be my food, though, of choice. Yeah. I hated how Kale was like, what are we doing? Like, he was such a party pooper about it. And she literally, it was so thoughtful. And then after the fact, he was like, oh, when did you start paying attention? To me, that's a huge red flag. Yeah. Like, I have to have someone in my life that's excited as much as I am. Yeah. Even if it was lame. Even if he, she brought him to some freaking, like, rat infested whatever. If she showed that much excitement about something, he should have right off the bat just been, like, all into it yeah. if he really cares for her and i feel like she's very just excited about life yeah like especially with how uh, hard her life has been yeah. that she finds like joy in these little moments and i and i truly think like someone paired with her needs to be as excited yeah and like grumpy not sunshine is not my favorite fun. thing i hate that i don't yeah. like grumpy me sunshine and so that's what this is giving and i'm like not a fan. Especially when somebody ha- has to work so hard for their sunshine. Yeah. Don't freaking be a storm cloud on her sunshine, That's damn it. Right. She deserves her sunshine. She does. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Dear <little> goodness. <laughs> um, okay, let me see if there's anything else about Kale um, that I had written down. He has taken up enough of my mental energy. Right? I will say, I find it fascinating, 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 fascinating that whenever Dorian thinks about Selena and Kaol, the temperature is described as dropping. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Very interesting. Moving on to a totally different scene. Yeah, let's do it. Um, my absolute favorite, Mort, Mort, freaking Mort. savage of a door knocker. He's a little brat. Yeah, I He's love a little it. brat. Last time you mentioned um, him being like the oh. one from Alice in Wonderland, yeah. and that's all I can picture. And also, why is her name funny? Uh, okay. Clock that. Right there. Clock that. Put a pin in it. Because not in these chapters, but the next chapters, we'll bring that up again. So like put a pin in that because it's it's interesting like it's so that's funny i love the way he says it too like ah, that's such a brat summer thing to do <laughs> like oh, oh, love him. makes me laugh um yeah that was one of my my things too yeah do you have something else to talk about or should we talk about archer yeah let's talk about archer i find archer very fascinating is he in Assassin's Blade at all? I don't. If he is, it's not like a big part. Okay. So, because I was like, it feels like there's so much history yeah. behind them. So, I was wondering if he was part of that. Um, but he, his like, his char- uh, charisma, hi- the way he can, like, turn on the charm and all that stuff is very Finnick O'Dare. Yeah. And that's who I kind of picture Sam Claplin. Mm. <laughs> I like, as, like, young Sam in this. Yeah. Um, but he, I, I don't know, like, okay, so they go and they have their little tea date. And she, 
he can like make her blush. Yeah. Like I, who is who, who are we picturing other than Sam Claflin as this? Um, like, you know, I'm also picturing um oh what is his name um Kit, what's his last name? Uh huh. He plays um Jasper in Six of Crows. Yes. Kit. I have a really funny story about this, by the way. Oh, hold on. Six. Who plays him? Who's oh, Kit. Kit Young. Kit Young. Wow. Okay. Such an easy name. And I now I'm not going to remember the other actor's name. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So recently on Broadway News, there's a new Romeo and Juliet out, and it's played by Kit Connor. <laughs> which is someone very different than Kit Young. <laughs> but when I was reading the news and I read Kit Connor, in my head I w- read Kit Young. Mm. And I went, oh, my God, he sinks. <laughs> and I got so excited about mm. it. I didn't do any other research. Any other re- research, nothing. And then the clip started showing on TikTok, <laughs> and I was like, this is not <laughs> – this gentleman is not <laughs> Six of Crows. <laughs> That's so funny. But – that's that's a good choice. Just very like can charm the socks off. Yeah. You. Yeah. Um I loved how she approached the situation of just like charming him and like they get in the carriage together. LOL at her sending the carriage Watch back because of KL. I love it. Keep him in line. Yeah. Keep him in line. Um and then she's just like, Yeah, I'm supposed to kill you. And he has his little knife. And he's like, please don't. And if he had only, she had only just ended it right there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But anyways, the whole scene was just like, showed his true character of like his little coward. Yeah. Just like, don't do it. Don't do it. Seriously, what's your little butter knife going to do against Elena? Uh, against Literally. Elena? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, okay, so that's pretty much what we have on Archer this time around, right? Yeah. There's nothing other than he's like possibly connected with all the rebels oh and like yeah. he's giving information to her. Yikes. Yikes. So how about Caltaine? Poor girl, first of all. She's also lost her marbles. My heart goes to Caltaine. It's awful. Yeah. I want her to kill Duke Parrington. Oh, my gosh. I hate that man. I just hope she loses her marbles on him and just ends it. Because yeah. he's disgusting. He's horrible. But so she's hearing these birds. Yes. Sorry. W- wings flapping. Yes. She's hearing wings. And her head is always hurting. Very interesting. It is interesting. And Selena gives her a cloak. Yeah. I forgot that was in this scene. Um, because she just went to go see her, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's I right. believe so. Okay. I couldn't remember exactly where we were in the story. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember why. Mm. Just trying to get info. Maybe. I do love that she's still a character in this because... She's such a gray character in the beginning of the series where, honestly, she's only trying to do what she was raised to do. Yeah. Which is climb higher in the ranks of society. And it, unfortunately, she found herself in a position where not great men were involved. And she became, honestly, the victim of the situation. Yeah. And, like, she's not blameless. Absolutely not. But it's, like... If she had just been raised a little different, like she would never be in this situation. Yeah, that's true. Dang. Poor Society. Company. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think I have a soft spot, spot for her. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Well, we have to talk about Dorian. Yes. Nehemia. Yes. We've got to talk about the circus. And yeah. we want our other scene with Kayal. Okay. And so let's take a break and then we'll dive Sounds in. great. We'll be right back. We're back. So, the first on the list of those topics we were going to dive into were? I don't know. You pick. We should 
I have like a little spinning wheel. <laughs> <laughs> what do we want to talk about? Let's talk about Finnish Kaol and, Sel- and Selena. Okay. Um, Selena gets invited to a ball, but to work. Yeah. <laughs> she's standing guard, and I love that. She's like, this is your fault, and I'm not out my space because you put beautiful music right next to me, mm-hmm. and it's frigid outside, and of course I'm going to dance by myself. And then Kale asked her to dance, and I mean, I'm human. I think that was cute. Yeah, it was cute. It was I saw fast this <laughs> gorgeous fan art of Selena and Kale dancing outside the window, and mm. then like looking out is Dorian, Dorian and Nehemia. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen that too, but I wonder if it's the same one, and it's like so pretty. It's devastating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Dorian. Um. But I did love that s- that moment, and it was so important because Selena starts to really like establish the idea of like she is just a girl, yeah, and he's just a boy, and they'll never be just a girl and a boy, yeah. Um, and then sp- Nehemia and speaking of <laughs> and Dorian's conversation, I love Nehemia. Mm-hmm. She means. No, b- she means business. Mm-hmm. She means business. She's there for a reason. She's there to make friends, but in reality, like, she's got a mission. She does, but also she's so kind because she could totally treat Dorian like trash. She has every right to. Yeah. And instead, she's like, I'll be there when you need me type of thing. And, like, and she was making little designs. Mm-hmm. Um, just drawing on the window pane or whatever. I think that it, w- th- it's ca- it was described as an invisible pattern, specifically ordered pattern. Yeah. And I think it was like a word mark spell to keep them the sound out mm. so they could have an honest conversation together. Because he even was like, oh my gosh, we're talking about this in public. Yeah. Like, in such front a good of point. people. And she was just like, had no cares. Yeah. Um, and also her flawless, whatever language they're speaking was yeah. described again Ooh. by Dorian. Um, but yeah, and what a friend Nahim Nahima just Nahimi <laughs> <laughs> Nahimia just wants Selena to enjoy being a girl. Yeah. For a moment, and I think that's where the root of her asking Dorian to back off came from. What do you think? Yeah. And also, like, understanding that that would be complicated. And, like, Selena deserves a little bit of uncomplicated. Yeah, that's so true. So true. Um, dang, I have a note here, and I can't remember exactly what it was in reference to, and I'm too scared to bring it up. where we get is it like the um the window and stuff right yes yeah. that was just breaking yeah hmm. wonder what that was um but yeah because one of the things she talks about is asking him to put in a word for elway elway yeah. right and something i don't remember exactly what it was but he was like i can't do it i can't do it and then he stood up for and lost his marbles outside and yes. like his magic. Yeah, he freaking like almost broke the castle. I do think that whatever um she did, like by putting her hand on his chest, like by his heart, like awoken like something. Activated it. Yes. Because it was very strategic. And like let's say it wasn't a soundproofing word mark thing, but it was something to like activate magic or something. Yeah. How cool would that be? That would be cool. Or even like some type of protection or something. Mm-hmm. Ooh. That's interesting. Yeah, because of her protection things underneath Selena's bed. bed. Yeah. Hmm. Mm, I don't know. You want to talk about the circus? Yeah. I was like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's so bold for a place that has no magic, brings in a circus, that is known for mirrors and tricks. Yeah. That's very, like, magic parallel. Mm. Adjacent. Magic adjacent. 
injured. Also, I need to know what their qualifications of being a witch are. Because Me how too. are witches not magic? Like, how is she allowed to, like, come and fortune tell? Like, what? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I have a lot of questions about the witches. Yeah. I have so many questions about witches. That's one of them. And, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it literally doesn't make any sense. Because there's a point where the three of them walk by and she, like, points out Kaol or whatever and starts reading him. Yeah, and, like, knows where he's from. Is that, is that, like, her just basing it off of, like, I, I don't know. Right. And same, like, Things, knew where yeah. Selena was from. And somebody's not going to be like, oh, this is literally magic mm. of some sort. There's something weird going on there. Yeah, like, the specifics of, like, what is banned and, like, what is, like, because if you say the word magic, you're, you're hang. Like, yeah, you're, you're out. Like, anything about referring to. And yet, they're having this circus for the prince. Who doesn't even make it, by the way. He's, like, stuck in the mountains. It's like... <laughs> oh, who is this kid? He's literally not been in this book once. No, he got shipped off to boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> um, But, yeah, it's very interesting. I need to know more about these witches. It's so weird. Um, Let me see. Okay, so we talked about the bishop. Where's my... Where's my stuff? But, yeah. It is so weird. I, I had a note here that was just, like... The idea of bringing in a circus is wild and so out of touch, and it mirrors so perfectly what's happening in the real world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I feel like the definitions of things are also very like yeah. So I don't know. It's it's. Did I just read one of my notes? Oh my god, <laughs> it's bizarro. It is bizarre. It's very bizarre. This is also right before or after. Dorian gives Kaol a huge, gorgeous Asturian mare. Yes. And Selena, like, She's drops so the lore. She just, like, randomly just drops all these things from her past. Yep. She's like, oh, I had one of those once. She's like that one friend that just has done absolutely everything. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we all have that one friend that's just like, oh, yeah, I, I did that. 100%. I feel like for me, that's my dad. That's fair. Like, one time when we were little, we like we're taking violin lessons mm -hmm. it didn't last very long and he just like literally picked up the violin and started playing a whole ass song and we we're like what do you mean you know how to play violin and another time we were just standing around my aunt's kitchen and he picked up a bunch of lemons and just started juggling and we were like what do you mean you can That's juggle so but like weird. he just like always has these random tricks or like random things and it's he That's is bizarre. that yeah it's freaking weird That's Selena. <laughs> <laughs> um I just think that's so funny. I also, um, oh my God, there's so much to talk about. We still have to talk about her dream, the stag, and the her day of mourning. Yeah. And then also something we didn't talk about is when she broke into the rebel's home or like went to the party at the rebel's home oh, and yeah. then stole the information yeah. and then killed someone. Okay, and so. Weekend. Poisoned, yes. She was poisoned. That's right. Yeah. Okay, let's back up. So, basically, she has this dream that she has every year, and she sees this stag, which is incredibly important and beautiful and fascinating. And then I do think Kaol's reaction was very sweet. Yeah. But also, like, oh, my God, am I becoming, like, a Kaol apologist? I gotta, I gotta go. We gotta change this quick. <laughs> Thank Yikes. God we're starting this new book. <laughs> Um, next, next week. <laughs> so, um, anyways, um, I do, do love, 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 love that Nehemia knew exactly what day it yes. was. But the, also, how did she know? The real one. Bestie. Yep. The besties always know. Her. Um, maybe, yeah, that's true. Maybe she put two and two together. And three and four, five and six. Because there's a lot. And numbers that go into this. Yeah. Do you have anything else to say about that? No, just that it was sweet and mm -hmm. that she just knew. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this rebel that maybe isn't a rebel but might be a rebel. That whole thing was weird. It was weird. And also Archer just peaced out. That Archer's was sus. Weird. Archer is weird. Archer's just trying to save his own skin. Literally. 
But um, there's one moment that I, I will go back on my I hate kale box. And <laughs> it's where she's like covered in blood and she walks in. Scares the shit out of him, by the way. <laughs> and she's like, this is the only place I knew where to go. This is the only place that I felt safe. And I'm like, mm. Nehemia could help you. First of all. First of all, she would go and hide the body. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Homeboy is loyal to the king. Mm-hmm. Get out of there. I just think that was stupid. Yeah. She's just a girl. I'm just a girl. Okay. Anyways, do you have anything else to talk about? Uh, I think you had some, didn't, there was something else. Oh, probably. <gasps> oh my gosh, back to Selena and Caltaine's meeting. Yeah. This is where she says, I, something is coming and I am to greet yeah. it. Yeah. And when I was listening to the audiobook, I thought it said, I am to breathe it. And I was very confused. I listened to it three times, and then I went and got my book out, and it says greet it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Because that, it would be freaking wild. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, there is something coming. Something wicked. Look this way. Thumbs. Should we go to our after show, where all the people yeah. who don't know what haven't read ahead? For sure. Okay, because it won't take very long. I don't have much to talk about. Do you? Nope. Okay, so if you haven't finished the rest of the series, this is a great time to peace out. Thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Fable, um, follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok, follow us on YouTube, YouTube. at Soupsy Book Reads. Love you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so Adian is, is mentioned. Yes. That's huge. And also, hello. Dorian has met Adian and Elena. Yeah. And um, I could have said this in the last time, but the amount of time it talks about her Elena. eyes. Elena. Where did Elena so come Elena from? And <laughs> Elena. <laughs> <laughs> I knew who you meant. Um, how it talks about the eyes mm-hmm. like constantly. That's a huge little, mm-hmm. little sprinkle in there. Um, and then the, the wings are fire wings, right? Probably. Fire wings. I don't know what else there would be. Yeah. Because the ball, they don't fly. fly. To my knowledge. So it would just be wyverns. Yeah. Is it wyvern or wyvern? I say wyvern. I also say wyvern. The audiobook says wyverns. I made a comment. It's like I made syrup a versus syrup. Mm. Um, but how interesting that Dorian met Aelin. Yeah. What a world this would have been. If like yeah. so much stuff changed. Yeah. You know, it was really funny though that she w- he in his mind was like. It was fine until she stuck her annoying cousin on me, and it was like alien. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Dang. Other than that, I'll never understand how Kaol just is okay with working with a wretched king. Literally. Um. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that I almost said alien earlier? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, don't draw attention. Don't, don't draw do it. Attention. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I, we both just looked at each other like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You good about that? Yeah. Cool. And what kept you up? What kept you home? Yes. Um, what kept me up was the book fair planning. Same. When we first originally did this. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot. So that's what kept me up. And then what kept me home, I started watching The Handmaid's Tale. And it's like when I'm not reading. That's what I have in my ears. It's wild. Dang. Yeah. My sister's watched it before, so I've been sending her updates. And I, I, one of the characters, I was like, how do we feel about this character? And she was like, I genuinely can't answer you because my answer gives away mm. a huge point. Yeah. And so I'm just going to leave it 
what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that's so fair. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. What that's about you? so fair. Um, also, book fair stuff and, like, still thinking about the book con and all the wonderful people oh we met gosh, and how much fun con. we had. How cool. Just, like. It was so cool. I can't wait to do it again. Yeah. And all of the authors were so amazing. It was so much fun. And I can't wait for what's going to come from all that. Like, all yeah. the authors that we met. Yes. And, like, the fun podcasters that we met. Yes. We, we met two different podcasts. Yeah. And so they were both fun. so nice. Um, And then cool bookstores. Yes. So many fun things. I'm so excited for all the, like, book friends. Me too. That was just and blast. And then also, Adeline Grace, I learned from her that the authors don't get to, like, approve audiobooks. So, like, this yeah, whole crazy. time, I've been thinking that, like, they have some say, especially, like, I don't know about, like, pronunciations and stuff like that, but, like, I think they can kind of, like, roll with things, and it's just law. Yeah, that's wild. That was that's something new, so too. wild. You know, just our buddy, Adeline Grace, that we sat next to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't get over that. I know. And, like, our bestie, Erin A. Gregg. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Amazing. Um... But yeah, that that is the most wild thing to me. I now, have no idea. Yeah. Now every time I think uh, hear an audiobook, like I just think of that. Like yeah. I wonder what the author thinks of this. Me too. Hmm. That was such a fascinating thing. Yeah. Like what does it take to get things corrected? Right. If they can't prove it. Yeah, because there she's in the process of mm -hmm. correcting or she may have recently like Yeah. But there was an issue. Mm -hmm. It was in like the old England. copy of the book or whatever. Yeah. That's wild. It's like Dang. I wonder what it was. You know what I mean? What yeah. was the story before? Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and just want to say how much fun we had at the book con. Like yeah. we we didn't mean to breeze over it. There was a lot of things in our lives that happened: hurricanes, yeah. evacuations, vacations, <laughs> book fairs. Yeah, but that really was the best time. That was so much fun, and like. I c I'm editing the pictures now yeah. and looking back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish we dressed up for the ball. I know. I was just living vicariously through I everyone. Like I didn't feel that until we were almost done because I was just so much in work yeah. mode. And then I took a picture of actually our friends um, and they had their dresses on and they were spinning. Oh, that picture is gorgeous. Yes. And they were like spinning and dancing together. And I was like, this could be me and you, Jess. <laughs> yeah but um i'm just so excited to where this is like going to lead like yeah. i can't believe we freaking we're moderating a panel two panels two panels you're so right stunning also so much fun. shout out to all the people who came to the book fair from the event yeah i had multiple people people come up to me and say like you yeah. look so familiar oh my gosh you were the the uh, moderators <laughs> <laughs> so thanks Love for it. All the new listeners, this craziness of like three weeks yeah, of no. Yeah, for bearing with us. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't usually happen. It does happen when it's hurricane season in Florida <laughs> and technical difficulties and such is mm. life. But yeah. Mm. So, anywho, next week we're reading to the end, and buckle on up because yeah. I have a lot of notes. <laughs> Um, and then our next book is Assassin's Blade. The Assassin's Blade. Blade. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Not ready for I'm so excited. Started. There were so many times through like the, uh, through this book that I was like, oh, Assassin's Blade. Just like, <laughs> 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 throws my mic. Just like little sprinkly things throughout the whole series that I'm just like, gonna be I know something me. you I'm don't know. Devastated. I know. I can't wait to send you all the Sam Cortland so things. Sad. Oh but also, so like, sad. I'll get you a box of tissues. I just don't want to be done with this world. I'm so sad. Okay. Well, Anyways. we'll see Stay you tipsy. next week.